Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I apologize for recently using different narrators in my videos. This is because the narrator I usually use has become difficult to access. Whenever I find a suitable replacement, I always encounter minor shortcomings with that narrator. So in essence, I ask for forgiveness for this issue. Hopefully things will improve in the future. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The federal government can print money anytime it wants, which is how we have a $35 to $40 trillion deficit for war funding. An interesting question arises. If the government can print whatever money it likes, why do citizens pay taxes? The only reason would then be that the government's power is infinite and taxing citizens has the sole purpose of defunding taxpayers, like a sanction. How does the government issue more money via debt notes? Assuming there is a market, Japan is the largest holder of American debt today. What are T-bills backed by? Nothing. And any country that buys said T-bills is a fool. A US citizen goes to the bank to borrow money and the bank asks, what collateral do you have that hasn't been pledged? None says the citizen. Bank says, no problem, shake my hand, and I'll give you $1 million in unsecured credit. How will the federal government pay its bills? It has no intention of such a task, hence the consistent cooking of the books. What happened to the missing $3 trillion discovered within the Pentagon pre-9-11? It faded into obscurity as Bush waged the longest, most expensive war in history. The war industry is a necessary diversion to obscure the real debt, which is likely significantly higher than the official statement. The credit system in America was a creation of the German bankers, in particular GMAC in 1919. This also created the ideology of buying out of want instead of need, i.e., consumption. Suddenly everyone needed a house, a car, lots more catalog clothes, more food, more this, more that and more, and manufacturing was the means, big money. During the early 1920s, seeing the profit motivation in credit, the number of national and state chartered banks doubled. The FDR regime intervened and became a de facto bank. Trade credit of nearly $2.3 billion comprised almost half of the nation's entire GDP of around $4.1 billion. Bankers saw the value in this system, and by 1930, banks became involved in installment credit loans. The most prominent was J.P. Morgan. While the Rothschild family banking cartel created money lending in Europe, it was primarily toward businesses as opposed to consumers. Installing Jacob Schiff in America, his task was to seek control over the American banks. It was through this alliance that the Rothschilds helped fund New York financier J.P. Morgan and the Drexels and Biddles of Philadelphia. It was this relationship that gave Rothschild power over Russia's Tsar Nicholas, whose assets were largely distributed across U.S. banks. It was Schiff and J.P. Morgan who established European branches of their respective banks in exchange for allowing the Rothschilds to control the banking industry in New York and ultimately America via the Federal Reserve System of Credit. It is this credit system that destroyed the Republic in Europe. To unravel the credit system would mean replacing the banking system with non-credit-derived loans, i.e., gold-backed. Who owns the gold today? A recent uptick in gold was blamed on China by U.S. Congress. In fact, like the oil industry, the commodities market is manipulated by bankers. When entities other than the cartel intervene, the bankers become nervous at the prospect that they will lose control. Gold has risen 20% in the last six months. Who is buying the gold? Turkey, Russia, China, and Poland. Why? Paper and faith have no value. They are incinerated at the slightest provocation. Gold is tangible, and Russia is reinventing their entire economy. With Putin taking an additional five years as president, his latest defense ministry appointment is an economist as opposed to a hawk. The point. To recreate a social and economic system that is not aligned with the classic Western Zion banker establishment. An establishment that has benefited the bankers while destroying the wealth of citizens. An establishment that relies on ownership via credit instead of value. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. Thank you. Nayib Bukel is the recently elected president of El Salvador 2019. His policies are anti-Western and thus deemed human rights offenses by the Soros-created Human Rights Watch. Why? Because Bukel rejects Western ideologies, systems, governance, and blackmail. While the diversion is Miley of Argentina, a WEF Biden protege who is destroying the economy and livelihoods of its citizens with 250% annual inflation, Bukel is fixing El Salvador by advancing stringent arrests of criminals, cartels in particular, cartels supported by the Western elite. Bukel is highly popular, has reduced cartel crime homicides by 75%, has initiated mass arrests, and is making El Salvador a country to be proud of. The people love him, the Kabbalist cartel hate him. Why? Because El Salvador is rich in resources that the West has been stealing for decades while pushing gang members across the U.S. border to wreak havoc. The Economist cites these atrocities of their order as the means wherein the order will fall. The world's rule-based order is cracking. That cracking means the Zionists are losing control. They are losing the propaganda matrix. They are losing the curtain that shields their incompetence. And alternate systems will be created that enhance a more moral, safe, and economically right way of nationalism on par with the Minoan society. With one additional caveat Russia will include in their peace, a machine of defense that the Minoans felt unnecessary for their continued existence. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.